Hi everybody, welcome to Juan MD. I'm Juan. On Juan MD, I'll talk all about my life as a doctor, like studying, taking care of patients, and making the most out of my Juan life to live. See, I just passed the medical board exams recently, and now I can actually use the word MD in my name. There is one big hurdle that lies between being a med student and the board certified physician in the Philippines. That is the PLE or the Physician Licensure Examination. It's a 12-part examination consisting of biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, pathology, legal medicine, pharmacology, internal medicine, surgery, obstetrics, pediatrics, and preventive medicine. It's normal for any student about to take the PLE to experience anxiety, inadequacy, fear, insecurity, loneliness, you get the picture. Needless to say, jumping into it with absolutely no board experience whatsoever, 99.9% .9 of medical students are bound to feel overwhelmed. And if that's not you, tell us your secret in the comments below. Because me, I was definitely no exception. And all of the aforementioned feelings, believe it or not, I felt those while I was studying for my boards. This is really hard. Get it? boards. Thankfully, there are a bunch of tools that a med student can use to gauge themselves when it comes to review. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about five resources I use to study for the Philippine Physician Licensure Exam. This topic was partially requested by Pinoy Men, who asked if I could talk about using Anki during my review. Shout out to you and thanks a bunch for the idea. Note that only the Board of Medicine is truly ever a master of the board examinations. No one technique is correct as only you know your study style, temperament, and personality. This video will only feature things that I thought helped me the most. I'm going to focus on stuff that helps solidify medical knowledge and information. Definitely, emotional, psychological, social, and spiritual support are important, but this video will talk about intellectual stuff and data of academic value. The other stuff I can talk about in another video. And stick to the end for a bonus resource that I believe helped me in particular. Without further ado, let's get to it. popular among medical students in the Philippines are review centers that offer lectures, handouts, and mock exams that help orient them on what they have to review. Some popular centers in the Philippines are Cracking the Boards, MedPrime, and Brains Medical Boards Review Center. I personally enrolled in Top Notch Medical Board Prep, which a lot of us like to simply call Top Notch. Heads up, this video is not meant to endorse any one medical review program, nor is it meant to compare their curricula. I'm just sharing my own experiences. I'm not really sure how things work in other review centers, but in Top Notch, a handful of highly skilled medical specialists compile high-yield medical info into handouts that can be used by medical students to help guide their learning. They also give lectures that give emphasis to topics they consider high-yield for the board exams. On top of that, previous PLE Top Notchers design mock examinations which are then scored to help the med student gauge their performance and modify their study style for their improvement. A review center helped me out by providing me a detailed outline to help me gauge the scope of what I needed to review for my board exams. Their mock exams also helped me track my progress with my own review. This year, review centers had to adjust their style because of the pandemic. What used to be an in-person, on-site review was radically transformed into a completely online format in order to protect both students and lecturers from catching the virus. For some students, keeping up with the lectures of a review center would be adequate for them to tackle all the anticipated questions of a board exam. However, this is not the case for every student, myself included. That's why I used other resources to help me prepare for my exam. When the information provided by review centers isn't enough, lecturers will often tell you to go back to the original textbooks for more detailed information. And in many cases, this is wise advice. Nothing beats reading the information yourself from the original textbooks. I personally use Board Review Series, or BRS, for studying biochemistry. It did not disappoint because it gave well-fleshed-out information on enzymes, metabolism, 
and biomolecules. Repeating this information throughout its chapters to hammer it deep into your working memory. A lot of students also refer to BRS for other subjects such as physiology and pharmacology. For pharmacology, other students like to use catsung as well. Although I heard some comments saying that these might be more appropriate for the pharmacology boards itself than for the medical boards. For anatomy, I used Netter's Atlas of Anatomy. However, I think the highest yield book in any case was my handy dandy First Aid by Tao Le which is a comprehensive beast in itself, offering information on the highest yield topics for any subject. I understand this is meant for the US MLE, <laughs> as the title suggests, but it's a tool that you can use for the Philippine board exams as well. Perhaps even you can use it for reviewing for the boards in other countries. What about you? What books would you consider high yield in reviewing for the boards? Why don't you comment down below and help the other students watching this video? One issue I have with books, however, is that they're books. They're just so wordy. That's why the next tool will come in handy as well. By the nature of my videos, you probably would have guessed that I'm the kind of student who likes using tactile, auditory, and visual methods of learning. That's really hard to do when learning at an online review center using textbooks. That's why it also helped me a lot to refer to lecture videos teaching some memory heavy topics for the exam, such as anatomy. On YouTube, there are several channels that offer these kinds of videos. I found anatomy especially difficult to study using textbooks alone because I needed visual implements to help me memorize the muscles, nerves, arteries, and spaces in the body. So I referred to the YouTube channel The Noted Anatomist. This channel offers a very comprehensive array of topics to study such as the head and neck, the chest, the extremities, and the reproductive systems. The lectures are by Dr. Morton, who according to his channel teaches anatomy to many medical students as well as dental, PT, OT, and PA students. His videos help me a lot in studying the PLE. I'm sure there are many other channels that are useful for med students, so if you know any that help you in particular, share these in the comments below. Now while reading, listening, and watching are very important for studying, these are all methods of passive learning. Time and time again, I've been told that the more effective way to study is by using active learning, which is testing yourself with questions to challenge your thought process. That's what the last two points are going to discuss. Flashcards are efficient ways for you to embed quick recall information in your memory. By using regular repetition of flashcard sets on apps like Anki, these will help you memorize more meticulous facts, such as the drug of choice, certain infections, pathognomonic symptoms for diseases, and anything that involves numbers, numbers, and numbers. One set of flashcards I used is Anki. Like Taula's first aid, this is often used to study for the USMLE, but the questions here help me to memorize concepts that were helpful in the PLE as well. It's comprehensive with questions on anatomy, pathology, pharmacology, microbiology, and biochemistry, among others. You can learn more about the deck through this video by the Anking himself, which also shows you how to set up the Anking deck and use it for your own purposes. One relatively more time-consuming but more effective way to use flashcards is to make your own. Ideally, this is done throughout med school, not during the review period for the exam itself. This way, you can recall topics the way you learn them, personalized to your own unique study style. This video over here by Dr. Kevin Jabal teaches you exactly how to make them for yourself in an efficient and effective manner. While flashcards are good for testing and reinforcing small memory tidbits, question banks help you synthesize all this information together, training your mind to answer questions that simulate those of the actual board exams. These are often multiple choice questions, testing your knowledge on patient cases, medical concepts, or clinical practice guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, review centers often give question banks of their own. In addition to this, textbooks such as the BRS series include a multitude of questions that you can use to test your knowledge. Also, when you're reviewing with other students, you can make your own questions and ask each other to help each other study for the boards. During my board review, I did something very unconventional, something that not even USMLE students often do. I would not personally recommend this for anyone in reviewing for their own board exams without understanding the risks. For a while, the U.S. National Board of Medical Examiners, or NBME, made their practice tests available for students 
to access online for free, though the promo itself is already over. It usually costs around $60 per exam. I used a couple of these in studying, particularly in the weeks nearing my exam. Though normally these are very expensive, and these are pretty difficult to review without the use of a book or a secondary resource. The NBME is used more as a gauge of preparedness. Typically, students would like to use UWorld, not NBME, to review for the USMLE. So if you're going to try what I did, consider the risk that I took. These are actually meant as mock tests, not review questions and these are meant for a completely different exam. Normally, the NBME exams are very expensive. However, in any case, questions are questions, and these will help you practice active learning and assess your own strengths and weaknesses. Are you liking this video so far? If you like it, why don't you like it? I'd really like it if you liked it and you liked it. If there are any resources that you used that I didn't consider in my list, why don't you comment it down below? But now, it's time for the bonus round. What made the board review difficult for me was the online setting. I'm used to studying and reviewing with other people, which is why having to look at the computer screen for 8 to 12 hours each day makes it very easy to burn out. Things turned around for the better though when I asked other people to join me studying online. It started with a simple chat room setup on Zoom or Facebook Messenger, where we all just turned on our cameras and did our own thing, read our own books individually. It was really encouraging and motivating to see other people studying alongside. In addition, there came a point where we would help each other in studying by concocting questions to help each other learn or tutoring each other in concepts that we had difficulty grasping. I'm very thankful to my friends who studied online with me because they reminded me that I was never alone in our battle against the board exams. So that's it for today's video guys. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Or did you not 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 like it? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, like this video, click on subscribe, and hit the bell so you can stay tuned for future topics. Before we end, it's time for the word of the day. That's it for today's video. Until next time, this has been Juan. Remember to always live life to the fullest because you only have one life to live.